Hello everyone, my name is Abby and I'm the Young Adult Assistant at the Twin Lakes Library System and I use she, her pronouns. So for today, for Must Read Monday, I am going to be talking to you actually about one specific author um, in her two books. In full transparency, um, these are not like my favorite books ever that I've read, but I do think that they're like what I'm going to talk about. I think they're good reads for that. Um, and I do think they're good books. I think it's more just like a, they're not my favorite thing in the world. I didn't dislike them. Like, I enjoyed them. They're just not my favorite. So I wanted to be completely honest about that. But I'm going to today be talking about Mary H.K. Choi's books. So she has two books. Um, her first book was Permanent, or Permanent Record, Emergency Contact. And then her second book was Permanent Record. Um, and both of these books are available in our physical collection if you are interested in checking either of them out after this. Um, and both of these on Common Sense Media are rated for audiences 14 and up. I personally would say maybe a little bit older. I'd say 15 or 16. Um, I think some of the content is a little bit more mature and you're actually following older characters so I feel like it'll be more relatable for people a little bit older in their teens, but, you know, up to your discretion. Um, and I'm going to be doing something a little bit different today with my format. I'm going to talk about, like, summarize both the books first, and then I'm going to talk about why I like them, because I think I like, like, the things I like about each of these books, I kind of like, um, in, like, the themes that are in both of these books I like a lot. I'm trying to word this correctly. Both of these books follow different characters, and the themes that they each discuss I think are very similar, so that's what I like about them. So, I'm just going to go ahead and get started. So, I actually read um, Permanent Record first, so I'm going to be talking about Permanent Record first. Um, also, my cover looks a little different than what it'll look like, and the book is a bit bigger in my version because I got it in like a subscription box. I didn't just buy it. Um, but anyway, that doesn't really matter. But Permanent Record follows... Um, our character Pablo, who is working at a 24-hour deli, um, that are kind of, it's kind of like a health food store bodega, it's, he talks about it a lot, um, and he went to college for about a year and then he dropped out, um, and he has no idea what he wants to do with the rest of his life, um, he's sort of trying to figure out everything else, and he's kind of in a lot of credit card <laughs> debt, um, he didn't make the most responsible financial decisions, and he sort of has a tense relationship with his family. Um, and so he's sort of just trying to figure out what to do. And then our other character is Leanna Smart, and she is very famous. Um, she used to be a Disney musketeer, and then she's been a very successful musician, um, pop musician. She is 19. Um, she's had, like, a bunch of number one singles. She you know, is very famous, everyone wants to be her, she's very, you know, advertising and product endorsement, um, and so yeah, she's living the life of a celebrity, um, but it's not exactly what she wants, she's not really enjoying it anymore, um, it's just kind of strange, she's not loving the dynamic, she's not loving, loving the lack of privacy she gets, it's a lot of that. Also, just to be clear, you don't actually ever get anything from Leanna's perspective. These are all things that Pablo kind of tells us, the reader. Everything's really from Pablo's perspective. So, yeah. Um, yeah. So then these stories don't seem like they'd be interconnected at all. But then one day, Leanna stumbles into Pablo's bodega at four in the morning while he's working the night shift and there's a snowstorm. And they sort of connect, and they get to know each other, and they develop a relationship and sort of try to figure out a dynamic because they don't, like I said, it's not like, it seem, it's not like, um, it's not like they could really be together because she's very, very famous and he has no idea what he's doing with his life. So yeah, so sort of them having to navigate their relationships and also their perspective, careers, and life choices. And then the second book, Emergency Contact, um, follows our main, well we have, actually this has two um, perspectives. So we follow Penny, who just graduated high school, she's going off to college at the University of Texas, Austin I think is what it is. Um, and she just kind of feels like, 
she's very normal, I think. She had, you know, fine grades. She had a boyfriend who she didn't really care that deeply about, but, you know, he was there. Um, and she's just kind of, like, trying to get out of that sort of mode. So she goes off to college, and she's studying creative writing, and... You know, she wants to leave everything at home behind. Her and her mother also have a very complicated relationship. Um, and yeah, she's just sort of trying to figure herself out in college. And then we follow another character named Sam, who he's kind of stuck. So he, you know, is not where he wants to be in his life. He's not very financially stable. He's not very emotionally stable. Um, he works at this cafe called The Home. And he sleeps upstairs in a mat on a mattress on an empty floor. Um, you know, it's not really what he wants for his life. And he knows that it'll get better eventually, but it's not what he wants right now. Um, his goal is to become a movie director, uh, but he doesn't really have the resources because he had to drop out of school and his laptop doesn't work anymore and he doesn't have a lot of money. And he's also having some drama with his ex-girlfriend and some stuff going on with her. And then, you know, his life is not what he wants. And so Sam and Penny um, end up meeting each other in a very eventful <laughs> way. I'm not going to spoil it. Um, and they swap numbers and they stay in touch and they text each other. And they come become really super close and they sort of talk about a lot of their deep feelings and what's going on with them and stuff they would never share in person or with other people and you know they sort of develop a relationship over the phone so yeah um so what I like about these books so I think that both of these are very realistic reads um this isn't like it's you know it's it's a contempt they're contemporary they're YA contemporaries um I'm trying to find the best way to word it. I feel like sometimes when you read, I say this a lot, so I say I feel like sometimes, but um, when you read YA Contemporary, um, you either have like super romance heavy, kind of doesn't feel realistic, perfect people, and then, or like the broody bad boy, and then there's like, you know, or you have really hard hitting contemporaries that are really, really intense. And I feel like, not everyone's life is like that. Um, you know, romance novels I find sometimes are very one-dimensional and then the other, you know, hard-hitting com contemporaries can be very intense in a way that a lot of people can't relate to. Um, and I feel like these books are so realistic. Like, they don't have anything that a normal person would it possibly be going through. Like, I feel like all of these characters someone in the real world has probably dealt with something very similar that each of these characters is sort of dealing with, which I appreciate because I don't feel like I see it very often in why, as I've said five times. Um, but it's nice to sort of see that and that story be told and for Troy to just pick normal people to make her main characters and essentially saying these are like people you should read about even if they're not people you would normally pick up about. I think that perhaps some other people would find this sort of boring, but I find it really interesting that she chose to write about people like this, and she chose to make her characters very normal people, um, and I appreciated seeing it. Um, yeah. Uh, I also really liked that it kind of talks about a time period that isn't really done in YA, so when I say that I mean a lot of the time when you read a YA book, you're reading it from like 15 to 16 to 17 year old or newly turned 18 year old perspective and you know they're like at this stage of life where they like I know everything and I'm the smartest person ever um as every 16 year old is at one point and you know like you're sort of following a younger character whereas in these you're all they're all like college aged people which or like in between about to go to college and as someone who is you know, college age or just recently graduated college age, um, I kind of appreciated seeing those kind of characters being represented because, I, again, I feel like in YA you don't really get to see that. And then the next genre after YA is new adult, and that's not super appropriate for YA audience because of the, some of the content that is included in it. And it also is kind of ridiculous a lot of the time. So it was nice to sort of see Choi take an age group that isn't really, I think, written um, 
in a super relatable way in a lot of books and kind of make them more accessible to readers. I appreciated seeing that. I appreciated seeing people who are like my age be represented in a book. Um, especially because, you know, as I get older, as readers get older, you know, I, I will always probably love YA, but you know, it is nice to sort of gradually like mature, make my reading taste a little bit more mature. Um, and follow characters who are a little older and a little bit more mature. Um, so yeah, so I really liked that. I really liked that she chose to write about people that are like college-aged people. I don't think it's a area of life people write a lot about, so it was nice to see. Um, let's see. I also think these characters are super relatable. Um, like I said, I feel like they're very normal people. Um, a lot of the conflicts that they have I feel like are stuff that anyone in the real world could be having. They're deeply flawed people. I'm going to be completely honest. I didn't really like Pablo um, in Permanent Record. And part of that is just because he makes so many mistakes. Um, and if you read this book, you'll understand. I like I liked him in the way that, like, a, like, he just felt like a stupid, like, older sibling, basically. And he makes so many bad decisions in the book. And you're like, Pablo, stop doing that. Um, but he keeps doing it because he can't stop. But I liked sort of see, seeing a character like that, um, just because I don't, I, you know, when we have flawed characters in books, they're very, they're deeply flawed. They're like deeply, deeply, almost unforgivably flawed sometimes. Whereas I feel like in these books, they're like, yeah, these are stupid mistakes that a lot of college students would make. Um, I know people who have made some of the mistakes that the characters make in this book. Um, and... Um, actually, there's a lot of discord about Penny from Emergency Contact. Uh, I actually went to, um, Y'all Fest, which if you don't know what that is, that's like a YA book festival, a couple years ago, and I watched a panel that Mary H.K. Choi was on, and it was about unlikable characters, and apparently Penny is, like, a character that a lot of people read and didn't like her, and... You know, she was sort of talking about it on her panel, and my really close friend actually read this book, and she's like, I don't think Penny's unlikable. And I did, read this book, and I was like, I don't think Penny's unlikable. I think she acts like someone who is 18 or 19, um, which isn't always the best, but, you know, I think she, like, is sort of trying to figure herself out, and in doing that, she sort of makes herself a little, she gets irritated by a lot of things, but, like, it's nothing that, like, you know, is super bad or anything. I don't know. I didn't think she was unlikable. I thought she was a really relatable character. I enjoyed her. So, yeah. Um, but yeah, so I really liked the characters. I liked how related well. I kind of liked that they were a little... S I kind of liked that they were screwed up <laughs> in some instances because I feel like, again, sometimes people make them too perfect. But yeah. Um... And then I'd say these books are really easy to read. I think once you start, you can fly through them. Like, I think Permanent Records, a little over 400 pages, and I think I read it in, like, two days. I read it really fast. Um, and I read Emergency Contact in three days. I will say they're a little bit slower of a read in terms of the material that you're actually consuming. Um, there's conflict, but there's not, like, there are big battle scenes and people have to go find mysterious things. It's more like a you know, again, real life sort of stuff. So I appreciated that. And they were fat, like when I would read them, when I'd sit down and read them, it would took me like, I get through like a hundred pages in 30 minutes, um, which I enjoy because I especially now enjoy consuming novels really fast so I can read more. <laughs> um, so I liked that. So I think they're good that way. So yeah, those are the two books that I am recommending. I will show them again because I think their covers are also beautiful. Emergency Contact and Permanent Record. Um, pick these up if you're interested. Um, and yeah, I hope you all have a good day. Bye-bye.